An implementation and analysis of a variable capacitance multiplier is discussed in this video. This circuit is useful in applications where an adjustable large value of capacitor is needed. It is implemented with two operational amplifiers or op amps, one potentiometer with a nominal value of P equal to 10 kilo ohm. Uh, it is shown as an analog potentiometer, but in an alternative implementation, this can be realized using a digital potentiometer or RDAC. We want to see how the circuit is working and then prove that the observed input capacitance as the input impedance of this circuit is equal to 1 plus Ry over Rx plus R2 times C1 in which C1 is the core capacitor in the circuit, in this case as shown with a nominal value of 100 nanofarad, and Rx and Ry are the two segments of the potentiometer that their values depends on where we set the potentiometer and the R2 is just a constant resistor in series with Rx, one segment of potentiometer, for the sake that when Rx becomes zero, we have a non-zero denominator. So the circuit remains stable. Okay, so let's first see how the circuit is working. Uh, so we make the assumption that for both op-amp 1 and op-amp 2, we have the proper connection for the supply voltages, whatever needed. And also for op amp 1, we can see that the output is directly connected to the input negative terminal, indicating negative feedback and effectively op amp 1 is wired in a buffer stage format. Uh, okay, so that, that is easy. Now we notice op amp 2, uh, we have the output connected via this cap and resistors back to the negative terminal, indicating a negative feedback, but at the same time, we have output connected via the main capacitor C1 back to the input. So let's see, looks like there is an indication of, uh, of course, negative feedback and also a positive feedback in the circuit. If we are interested in finding the input cap or capacitor, of course, the uh, usual, the best way, the uh, method is just apply test voltage, let's say V test here. And uh, after, so we know the value of V test, it is something we choose. After applying that, we need to find out as a result what test current is flowing into the circuit so that then we say input impedance is equal to the applied test voltage divided by the resulting test current. So we need to find this resulting test current as a function of the known test voltage. Okay, so if we apply a V-test, then V-test appears at this node, obviously. And since op-amp doesn't draw any current at input terminal, because input terminal has effectively practically infinite impedance, therefore there is no voltage drop across R1. So this VT appears directly at the positive terminal of the op-amp. Because op-amp is in linear region of operation enforced by the negative feedback, virtual short is enforced, which means that the pos positive terminal and negative terminal, they have the same voltage. So if we have VT at positive, then VT appears at negative. In this buffer stage as expected, VT appears at the output. Okay, so VT is at input of this R2 resistor. Then via this series of R2 and potentiometer, and then connection via R3 and cap 10 picofarad, which is a stabilizer cap in the circuit, then we have effectively a connection uh, to the negative terminal of the second op amp and then the output. As you can see, the output of the second op amp is connected back to the negative terminal. But what happens is then at the output of the second op amp VR2, is an interesting situation. So let's say VT is going up at input somehow, and because of that, at the output of up and one, VT appears and go up. So when that is going up, it means that we are effectively pushing up, trying to increase the input of negative terminal, uh, in input negative terminal of up and two, which then up and two naturally positive terminal completely grounded will respond by pushing the output downward because it noticed that we are increasing the in negative input. And as a result, we can see that across capacitor C1, there are contradicting events happening. On the left, at the left side of, on the left side of the cap C1, we have VT that we apply and we are saying, assume it's increasing. As a result of that increase, we notice that the output of op amp 2, VL2, which is the other side of the cap is decreasing voltage-wise. 
So that is an indication of a positive feedback in the circuit because uh, the resulting action is not compensating for the, let's say, what, what else, uh, the, the event that is actually started. So it's aggravating, actually. The voltage across cap is increasing further. And this is by design because we want to have a state sort of controlled positive feedback so that we get this nice outcome in terms of um, multiplying or scaling the value of cap that only happens when we have positive feedback in the circuit. So with that said, now that we understand the circuit, let's just find the uh, run the analysis and uh, find the formula, prove this formula. Okay. So we applied the test voltage and test voltage showed up at the output of our pamp one. That we know. Uh, the nice thing is uh, this 10 picofarad here is 10,000 times smaller than the 100 nanofarad. So knowing that the impedance of cap is, of course, inversely proportional to, let's say, uh, the frequency and the cap, then as cap is 10,000 times smaller, the impedance of this cap is 10,000 times so let's say this is cap C2. The impedance of that is 10,000 times times the impedance of cap C1. So this is effectively open from perspective of the frequency range of interest here. So um, what I'm trying to say is the, there is no current flowing through this resistor, of course, uh, in the analysis. So we have a direct connection uh, from negative terminal via this resistor to where we set the value potentiometer. So here at the positive terminal, we have ground because of virtual short for this op amp two, because we are saying the circuit is a stable. Then what we have is we have virtual ground at the negative terminal. And since there is no current going through one kilo ohm, there is no voltage drop across one kilo ohm. So this zero virtual ground also is present uh, here at the pointer at the center of the, let's say, the potentiometer. So uh, then what happens because of this, effectively we have here an inverting amplifier. So the first op amp is buffer, but the second op amp is inverting amplifier. So let's see then. So I'm gonna just write like this. I'm gonna say for the second op amp, we have one kilo ohm, that's R2. And then we have the Rx, the first portion or segment of the potentiometer. And then we have the point here that has a voltage of zero volt, as we talked about. So if effectively, it's as if it's, uh, you can think of it as if it's connected to negative terminal and it's uh, grounded. And then we have, or it's virtually grounded. And then we have Ry the second segment of potentiometer connecting to the output of op amp while the positive terminal of the op amp is grounded. So this is an inverting amplifier, of course, at the output of V out two for the op amp. We, we purely write a simple KCL or Kirchhoff current law, which we are making uh, the assumption that nothing can go through the terminal of, input terminal of op amp. So whatever current going uh, toward this node is also equal to the current that is going out. So if we have V test at the input, then obviously at the output of this inverting amplifier, we have negative Ry divided by negative Ry divided by the sum of the series of one kilo ohm, which is R2 and Rx. So it's R2 plus Rx. Okay, so that's at VR2. So let's see what we have now, times, of course, V-test. That is equation one. Uh, so on one side of this cap, uh, the capacitor C1, we have VR2 because it's connected to the output of uh, the second op amp. On the other side, which is the left side, we have, of course, the test voltage that we applied. So therefore, I can say... Uh, the voltage of capacitor. So I'm going to write it here. The voltage across the main capacitor C1 is V test on one side minus, and on the other side, we have from equation one, according to equation one, we have negative Ry over R2 plus Rx and times V test. 
So if I factor out the test, then I get 1 plus Ry over R2 plus Rx. And that is Vc1. So what is the benefit of this? Well, uh, the nice thing is because I have Vc1, then I can find the current that is flowing through the cap, which is Ic. And the nice thing is, let me change the color so that it's observable. So it's uh, as shown, it's Ic1, which is the same as the IT or target input because uh, at the input of the circuit, if IT is flowing, then there is no other way for IT aside from going through the cap because that it cannot go through the 10K because the current through the 10K here is zero because that's connected to the input of input terminal of op amp that has a zero current. So therefore, what I can say, I can say uh, IT input, let's say test current, uh, the result of applying the test voltage is equal to this, is the same thing as the current of the main capacitor C1, but the current of main capacitor C1 is voltage across cap divided by impedance of cap. So it is effectively VC1 over 1 over CS if you are doing the let's say s domain analysis or you want to sub, uh, replace s with j omega that's fine as a sinusoidal steady state analysis then i'm going to just use equation two here because we found what is vc1 so using equation two i'm sub uh, so i'm substituting vc1 and it becomes vt times one plus ry over r r2 plus rx or rx plus r2 and we are done over 1 over CS because what is the definition of input impedance? As I mentioned, it's just VT, V test over I test. So I'm going to just say then Zn is V test over I test, which using equation 3 is equal to, uh, so uh, V test. Let me just make sure that color is there. So there is I test and there is V test. So V test over I test is simply the inverse of what we have here. So it will be effectively one over CS times um, we have. So let me just make sure that we have so one over CS and then we have times uh, one plus Ry over Rx plus R2. If it makes if it if it uh, if it is helpful, then I can shift this C, this S to the other side, to here, and then we have C times or C1. Remember that this is cap C1. So, and then this is what we wanted because what we, what is what is the thing that is shown here? We are showing that input impedance Zn is 1 over a value times s. So this is clearly indicating that we are observing, a, a, we are simulating a, or we are realizing a, simulating a capacitance. And its value with a value of this one which is C1 times 1 plus Ry divided by Rx plus R2. So clearly, we have scaled or multiplied the value of capacitor. For example, uh, as an example, let's say, if we are interested in, uh, let's say, multiplying 100 nanofarad in this case by a factor of 100 so that we can get to 10 microfarad, then we can select given that R2 is 1K and uh, we have it in denominator with uh, Rx, then uh, maybe what we need to do, of course, we are limited here to the maximum 10X gain, of course, or 11X, let me put it this way. So we cannot get to what I said, but in, in the case of, let's say, as an example, if we set Rx equal to zero and therefore, and therefore, 
uh, as a result, Ry is just equal to the total value of the potentiometer 10k if R2 is set to 1 kilo ohm, as an example that I provided here, then uh, it becomes, this, this whole thing becomes 10 and plus 1 give us 11. So we get 11 times C1. So we can realize 11 times, 11 multiplier of the cap. So 100 nanofarad becomes 1.1 pico microfarad at the input of the circuit. But of course, we can adjust R2, uh, let's say, to a smaller value so that we get more gain. But be careful that when we do this, at some point, the circuit might become unstable uh, and uh, because of the positive feedback. So that, that becomes an issue. So we need to be careful about that. I hope this example is helpful.